okay. Recently, I was working on a client project where this was the effect we were trying to achieve. When you roll over the link, the highlight grows. When you roll off, it shrinks back to its normal size. In this video, I'm gonna show you how we did it. If you're new to the Self Teach Me channel, my name is Amy Dutton. I'm a web designer and developer. If you're just getting into this space, sometimes it's hard to know where to start or what resources to trust. I wanna help you level up and get to where you wanna be. If this sounds interesting to you, hit the subscribe button below. Hit the subscribe button below. Part of becoming a better web developer is knowing what tools you have at your disposal and then being able to determine what the best method is. There are usually several ways to accomplish the same result. As you become a better developer, you'll start to develop opinions that will help you determine the best method and the fastest way to get there. Let's start by exploring some of the options that we have here and then I'll explain the solution that we arrived at and why. That way this isn't just a copy and paste job and you'll understand why we landed at the conclusion that we did. To the code. Our HTML is really simple. We have an A tag with some text inside. Right out of the gate, let's give this a font family of sans serif and a font size of 72 pixels so we can see a little bit better what we're working with. The first solution I probably reach for is text decoration because that's how links are usually styled within CSS. In fact, if you wanna remove the underline, you'd have to say text decoration is none. The text decoration property is pretty versatile. Did you know that it controls whether the line appears below, through, or above the text? Usually use it for underlining text, but you can also use it for strike through or creating a line above. Out of the box, this property will assume the color of the text. So if we change this to red, the line changes to red as well. But you can change the color of the line and define the style of the line as well. So I can say dotted purple. Then you could also use a wavy line. I've never used that before. One thing that's unique to the text decoration property is did you notice if you have a descender like the G and strange, it will actually break up the underline. I didn't actually know this until I started doing research for this video, but you can use a text decoration skip ink property to remove the gap. This is pretty cool, but the solution poses a few problems. You can't change the width yet. In a future version of CSS, this will be available. This does bring up a good point though. How do you know if it's safe to use a CSS property? I'm glad you asked. You can go to a website called caniuse.com and search for that property. So in our case, text decoration. And it will tell you what kind of browser support it has. Here we can see that for text decoration, the styles and colors and types of lines are only partially supported. That's why it's this kind of yellow color, whereas this is green and fully supported. Ultimately, this property isn't going to work though. We need to be able to control the width and the placement of the line as well as be able to animate it. The next option that we have at our disposal is the board property. This one seems promising. If we look at the code, let's clear some of this out and add a border bottom of 15 pixels. Then we'll actually need to turn off the text decoration so that we don't have a double underline. Okay, now let's define what happens when the user hovers over the link. So we can say a hover border bottom animate this, we can use the transition property. And we wanna add this to the main CSS definition and not the hover definition. In fact, if we add it to the hover, then the animation will affect the roll over link, but not the roll off state. See? So let's move this into our main block here. Now you can see it's animated. Now when we hover over our link, it's growing and changing colors, which is awesome, but we can't really change the placement of the border. Let me explain. With the box model, you have the box surrounded by padding and then the border and then margin. Really the only way to change the border's position is to adjust the padding, but this moves the border down further away from the content and not behind it like what we need. Hmm, not quite ready to give up on our border just yet. So far we can do everything that we want except placement. A pseudo element might work. There are several different pseudo elements, but in our case, we're just gonna focus on the before and after, and it does just what you think it would do. It injects content before or after our element. Okay, so let's jump back into the code. We wanna keep our A tag, but we can get rid of this border bottom transition and this hover. 
to use this pseudo element on the A tag, I'm gonna say A, double colons, before. Sometimes you'll see a before or after with a single colon. And this works too because it was introduced during CSS2. But with CSS3, more pseudo elements were added and so it's better practice to use double colons. Let's give this a border bottom of pink. To get a before after to display, it has to have a content property. We don't have any text we're trying to inject, so we can just leave it blank. We still can't see our border, so let's open up our dev tools. I'm gonna hit Command Alt I on a Mac, and you can click on this little arrow thing, and then you can click on the item that you're trying to find within your code. It'll automatically highlight it. So we have our A tag. I'm gonna expand this down, and you can see here is our before pseudo element, and you'll notice that it has a width of zero. Okay, we can fix this by adding a display of block. Close our dev tools and keep going. Now we can see our border above the text, but since it's before, it stretches across the entire width of the browser. Let's add our display inline block to our A tag. And then now our border is only limited to the length of the actual text. So to get this placed properly, you'll need to do a little position work. So let's change this to after. Okay, we still need to do a little position work, but not nearly as much. Let's add a position of relative because we want to move it relative to where it is right now. And then we want to move it up 25 pixels. I'm going to say top negative 25 pixels to bump it up. It's getting there, but our underline is appearing on top of our text. We can fix this with a Z index of negative one. That negative value will send it backwards. Okay, this is starting to look promising. Let's add our hover effect. This is gonna look a little funny because we wanna style what happens when you hover over the A tag, but the style needs to be applied to the after pseudo element. So, okay, so let's say A, colon hover after, we want a border bottom, 30 pixels, solid yellow. Now we just need to animate between the two states. Same as before, we wanna add a transition property to the main element. The only thing is that now it's growing down instead of up. So we can offset this by adjusting the top property on hover. So I'm gonna say top negative 40 pixels. You'll notice the border animates, but the position doesn't. Not a problem. We can add another property to our transition. So I'm gonna say comma, top, half a second, ease in, out. This looks like it checks all the boxes, but if our text covers multiple lines, what happens? Let's update the text within our A tag. I'm gonna add a line break and say things. Okay, you'll notice that the line only affects the second line, but not the first. And this might be exactly what you want. Let's look at another option, box shadow. This probably isn't a solution that you would normally reach for because we usually associate box shadow with drop shadow. But if we give it a blur of zero, it will have a harsh edge and look like an underline or a border. Let's pull up the documentation. If you scroll down, you'll see these are our options. These are vertical lines are called pipes and it might make this look a little confusing, but a pipe in code means or. So if you're looking at this, you can say box shadow is none or you could use these values here. Then here at the end, it's saying you can set the border to inset, initial, or inherit. If you scroll down further, you can see that the H offset and vertical offset are the only required properties. Then at the bottom, there are a bunch of examples. And, and look, you can attach more than one shadow to an element. You just add a comma separated list of shadows. Okay, so in our code, let's get rid of our pseudo styles and our display inline block. And now we can add a box shadow to our A tag. So I'm gonna say the horizontal offset is zero. We don't want it to shift to the left or the right. The vertical offset is gonna be negative 25 pixels. I want to move it up. Then we want the blur to be zero. 
Then uh, let's give it a color of pink. And then last, we'll use inset, so the box shadow grows inward and not outward. All right, now let's style the hover effect. And say box shadow, zero, negative 50 pixels, zero, yellow, inset. Sweet, so now we can add our transition, box shadow, perfection. When you're trying to determine the best code solution, usually you'll have a set of criteria that you're trying to meet. In our case, that helps narrow down what the best solution was. The other two factors that I'll look at are how many lines of code. So with our box shadow solution, that took one line of code, whereas our pseudo element took at least seven. And readability, will my future self or another developer be able to come behind me and figure out what I did? Even if a box shadow isn't immediately obvious, comments are always helpful. And with that, we are done. In the description below, I'll include several links to code pins. Feel free to fork those or snag the code inside. If you like this video and like to see more videos on web design and development, hit the subscribe button below. Hit the bell icon if you'd like to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Until then, keep coding. Hey. <sighs> it's a doozy.